Hello, my name is Ralph Meganson, and I'm an artist. I started when I was three years old from drawing, and uh, started painting, paint by numbers when I was in sixth grade. Uh, did a lot of cards at first for little kids at school and things. People get sick. We do cards like in the first grade, but uh, you know, always loved drawing all my life and kept with it all my life. Started taking classes out of Michigan State when I was in eighth grade. Went to certain colleges in the summertime. Since Michigan State was close to me, I could do that. And my mother sent me out there to take a few art classes. Got up to high school, went to Interlochen National Music Camp, and that went to the Arts Academy there. It was very nice. It was nice for a summer. You know, you kind of miss home. You get away. It's like being on the other side of the world. But that was something else, Interlochen. And I met a lot of good friends there. A lot of good people there. That was um, that was college courses too, and then high school. I uh, just mainly stayed in high school. I got a chance to go back to Interlock, and I I really didn't want to go because of uh, it's a summertime. You want to spend with your friends. I was working at Burger King too, and enjoyed work. You know, enjoyed working there. Did paint some pictures for Burger King. They had uh, the Boys Club in Lansing, Michigan, and did some pictures for them, and. Uh, End up going to Kindle School of Design, which is art school in Grand Rapids, Michigan, for a year. It was so small, I wanted to go somewhere else, so I ended up transferring to Western Michigan University. Ended up graduating with a painting degree there. Yeah, then learned to graph design when I got with the Journal Constitution in Atlanta, Georgia. That's, that's really how I got to Atlanta, Georgia, from uh, my painting skills, and then I became a graph designer which I'm trying to get into again now. What inspired me was, uh, I think it was my mother. I, I loved drawing. My mother would doodle all the time, and you know, after seeing her doodle, that made me draw, and I started drawing out of my grandmother's Britannica encyclopedias. And then uh, just kept doing it. Go over her house on the weekends and draw, draw, draw. I was drawing animals. I would mainly go to the animal page, the elephants and the horses, things like that, you know, different type of horses, and got to drawing people in mainly, i say sixth grade, got to drawing people, but before that it was just animals and flowers. I made a very quick drawing, it wasn't very quick, it was oils at first, and it was abstract, and it was all... It was just color mixing. It was a lot of blues, silvers, reds. And this guy would look up at the, the painting in my living room when I was living in Atlanta, and he was like, man, I can just get lost in this painting. I love it. This guy from New York. And um, I was like, oh, really? It was just I would draw these. I mean, really, it were pretty simple paintings. And this dude just loved it. So it kind of inspired me to keep it going and try to do something with it. And that's what I do with my abstract paintings, uh, with my horse racing or uh, my jazz pictures. I just I keep all those colors going and then do a little bit over it. My uh, influences were like a lot of artists from the Renaissance period, uh, Raphael, um, a lot of artists, some artists from now. I met Charles Palmer, very nice guy, and loved his artwork too. Like I said, I love the art from the Renaissance period, and I think a lot of my portraiture kind of, I like the dark backgrounds with the portraiture that Raphael did. Um, sports art, I really go on my own with the sports. Uh, Ernie Barnes, the guy was, that did the paintings on Good Times, to me, he was one of the best. I loved how he, he made his images and how he... Um, I would say kind of surrealistic, but he made them, but real, but the strength of them, his paintings were something else. Strength of them was, was beautiful. It's a lot of artists that inspire you. There's a lot of good artists out there, and I like a lot of different art. I can't even mention them all, because back in the day, like I said, the, the Renaissance painters, uh, you know, Raphael, uh, Michelangelo, those guys like that. They were all great. So, you know, they studied anatomy, and I wish I could study anatomy just a little bit more like they did, but real anatomy, 
But uh, that's why you try to capture people when you do your portraits. Oh, my basketball. I love doing basketball art, basketball players. Uh, I don't know. I've always loved basketball. I, I tried to play it. I wasn't very good. So, <laughs> but I had a lot of friends that were pretty good in it. And uh, I love basketball art is probably, I love the game because it's fast. It's, it's great. I mean, I love doing any type of sports. Hockey, basketball, uh, soccer, it doesn't matter. Anything, to me, it, it just takes endurance. It takes uh, very good ability to play any of those sports. Really professional. You know, I, I love it. That's just me. I'm a, I, I played football. I loved football. I don't paint a lot of football. I have painted some. But... Um, Basketball, I'm always going to love basketball, and I, I love painting basketball. I love the action of basketball, because he knew I, everybody knew I drew, everybody. If they didn't know me for football, they knew me for drawing. A lot of people who, who knew me for football didn't know I could draw, but the people in school knew me for drawing the most, drawing and, and boxing, <laughs> but uh, mainly drawing, because I was always an artist. I was always an artist and everybody knew me as an artist. My favorite technique I would say is uh, realism. I don't think I'm at the best I could be in realism, but um, I love the technique, love it very much. To me, it's hard. You, can't, you can always change a picture every other day you see it. You're like, oh, I miss this, I miss that, or I can make this lighter or make this darker. Every time you see a picture, you can do that. But uh, realism is my best technique. I think abstract would be my second best technique. I love my, the abstract. Uh, I love the colorfulness of it. Like someone, you know, you look at Leroy Neiman picture and painting and you see all the colors. And that's what I like of my art. Some of my artwork is the colors that come out at you. Uh, the medium I'm using is oils. Most of the time for my uh, portraits, I'm using oils. Sometimes acrylics, acrylics are, they dry faster, but to me oils are just better. I love them because they mix better. Oils is my thing. It's really my thing, but I can do, uh, I love doing my abstracts with acrylics because it's fast. They, they dry faster. Acrylics do, they'll dry in uh, oh, two, three hours. The quickest isn't the, isn't the best all the time, I should say. So, you know, it's fun. It's fun. All the colors, I love doing the horse racing. Just to me, it's, it's beautiful. I love doing those, though. They're different than uh, the realist paintings, but they don't take nearly as long. And then you can almost sometimes make, if you do it big enough, an abstract painting, you can make it realist almost, if you want to get more detail into it. Me, I try not to get too detailed with the abstracts. This art was inspired by, it was a, you know, a la lady in a magazine, a model in a magazine, and I just painted it. I really just painted it. it um, I love the picture. I kind of captured it. I draw by my eye. I don't use anything. I don't even use any setup, any uh, like go by the squares or anything. It came out all right. I, I think it, it could be a lot better, tell you the truth, but I just love doing it. It was, you know, I love drawing people. Now I'm a people person. I love capturing people, all types of people. But to me, when you do them, when they're right in front of you, you can't miss out. You gotta capture them. Because if you don't, they don't want it. And a lot of people will tell you, man, you can't, f you don't see a lot of people who can do that now when they see me drawing people out in the open and stuff. You know, or at an art show. Maybe Las Vegas Artists Guild to give. You don't see a lot of people that do that anymore. You know, draw right on hand. You see some caricature, art, caricature artists doing that now, and they're pretty good. You know, but that, that helps you so much on your portraiture, tell you the truth. But I just like doing peep, pictures of people right, right in hand, right in front of me. I can do a person in 30 minutes. When on, on a good day, I get my sleep and everything. I'm, I, I get everything, I can, you know, you're seeing well. When you see well, you can draw well. When I sketch, I mainly um, use a picture, you know, try to get, if the person's not right in front of me, I try to get a picture of the person 
and sketch it on just pencil paper or bristle board, whatever. Sketching, I, you know, was something I always do. That's something you always do. Because you got to sketch on these big boards like the one I'm doing back here of uh, LeBron and uh, Michael Jordan together. You know, you got to sketch it out first on the canvas. Then you paint over the sketch. So sketching is something I'll never lose, I hope. I can use a, a regular HB pencil and sketch. I use a uh, lot of Stabilo's pencils, uh, charcoal pencils, 9B to 2H, mainly the HB because you can just sketch anything and you can always mix it with a piece of paper or whatever. Mix it with toilet paper if you want, but uh, seriously. And um, the sketching though, it's just something that you do, and I mean, Prismacolor pencil, color pencil, you draw with that and sketch with it and mix with it. And a lot of good artists, I mean, I went to a Marvin Mendelssohn's art class. He told me how to get my tone softer from New York City, and he, uh, you know, he's got a good art class. Oh, man, he drew a portrait, beautiful portrait, in, a, in six, seven hours, eight hours a person. I mean, he gets money for these. Yeah, my Native American art, I, I've been doing for some time now. I, I love doing the Native Americans and uh, have some Native American in me and every tribe that I have in me, I try to paint like this is Ojibwe. I have Ojibwe in me. My great-grandmother was Ojibwe. I had a great-grandmother that was Apache, so that's my Apache part. And had Blackfoot, which I don't have a painting of now in me. Uh, you know, I am always always do uh, Native American art, always, and that's something I'll never stop doing. I like doing Native American art. Uh, kids, I like doing the regalia they have on. Uh, you know, they have the uh, headdresses, the animal headdresses, love doing that. I know a lot of people may not like that because, you know, things with the animals and stuff, but anybody's culture is their culture and from a long time ago. You can't mess with their culture. Yeah, my grandfather's mo mother was Native American. My uh, father's grandmother was Native American, and that's from Alabama in the Apache tribe down in uh, Mobile, Alabama, uh, Mount Vernon Barracks. And also, I mean, on my mother's and my father's side, I have Native American. On my mother's and my grandfather's side, they have Native American. My grandmother was Blackfoot. My grandfather was Ojibwe. Yeah. And I didn't know that until my, uh, my great-grandmother passed away. I think it was one of her brothers said, you know, we got Blackfeet in us, a lot of Blackfoot. And he looked Native American. I mean, he looked just like, it's a famous Blackfoot picture that's in the books, and all these books, Native American books, and he looked just like it. He looked just like, without even saying that. I mean, he looked like the picture. But uh, yeah, so I'm proud, I'm proud, I would say, you know, 20% Native American at least, yeah. Here's one I did of a Sioux warrior. I call it Old Sioux Warrior that I had made prints of. This is a print, the first print of it. I did that, that, that painting probably took me about uh, five, six months to do because I didn't do it every day. I let it dry and then went over it. I didn't do it every, you know, if I was to do that every day, I could have done it within a week, you know, easy. The original is about 30 by 40 inches. It's something I did, sold it to my brother. My brother bought it off from me, and I think he still has it. He, one guy wanted to buy it from me in Detroit for like, this is 20 years ago I did this, and uh, for, for $8,000, and I was like, man, why don't you sell it? I could always do you another one, you know? <laughs> you could have gave me some of that money, and, and you could have took the other half, or more, because it's your picture. But he didn't sell it. I was like, you're crazy, man, because I could have did you another one, no problem. My jazz art came about me doing an abstract. I uh, do layering. Backgrounds, a lot of colors, then put some uh, people on it. Uh, to me, it's pretty easy, and like I said, it's abstract. It's, it's not supposed to really capture anybody, but then it does. A lot of times, it'll come out looking like somebody, but uh, do I care? No, not really. 
It's just a person playing the piano, pl person playing the guitar, person playing the drums. It just comes out. And I just love doing it. It's fun to do. As you see with this, this jazz painting, it's a bunch of colors from the background. And I took a scalpel knife and blended the colors. If you see the background, it's just same with this one. All blended colors in the background. I started with that first. Then I put the people in. When I put the people in, I did it with a scalpel knife. Just put some paint on the scalpel knife. You can almost tell right in here the paint. Just, uh, and, uh, and, you know, playing around with it, the glasses on this guy. And, it, and it's just fun. And you can overlap with the scalpel knife, overlap people, whatever you want. Uh, just like in the big one up here, a lot of overlap. And, um, and then after I, I get done doing it, after I've captured the people how I want it, after I do that, then I put uh, a lot of times a polyurethane, it brings that big gloss to it, the polyurethane. Sometimes I use the real thick stuff, what they sell in the art stores, the, uh, which you mix together. It's two different ones. And right here, this picture here shows it, you know, it's this very glossy, very glossy. And the polyurethane is a thick stuff that you put on and you can blow dryer it and it gives you that thick gloss. But uh, a lot of people love that picture. And it's very, very like, uh, I would say very sketchy in a sense with the, with the lines. And, but I love doing this. It's something, I'm liking this better and better, this picture here. At first, I kind of didn't like it at all, but I like it better and better. And people, I'm with this lady's gallery, B. Dion Bowles uh, Gallery right now in town. And she's like, yeah, a lot of people like that. And I say, well, who wants to buy it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that, you know, it's, it's nice to like it. If I got a print, I'll get you a print of it, but. Nothing's like an original, that's for sure. I like making art for people. I do plan to sell it, and I do art for a commission. My goals are to work independently every day on art. Uh, selling my art to people, I love to be doing it full time, every day. You know, if it's not for somebody, maybe in the casino gaming area, I love to be doing my own. You know, for galleries, I do sell prints of my art. You know, it ranges everything from up to maybe eighty and ninety dollars for a limited edition print to up to five, six hundred dollars for like a three by four foot. But that's what I would love to do my art on independently. You know, I'm doing commissions sometimes. Once in a while, I get a commission. Not a lot because I haven't been in a lot of art shows. I do try to show my art, but it's you know it's hard getting in galleries now. You know, sometimes they want your art right then or and you can't get it to them right then. Or it, it's going to take, you know, two or three months till uh, they have something. You get commissions off people seeing your artwork. You can't be at the house and they see your artwork because that's, it's all your artwork in the house. And who comes over your house? Not many people. Unless you got a big house and you're having parties. I don't. They sold one of my music pieces, but... You know, 50% is kind of expensive, and it's taking all your money, and that's what a lot of these galleries in Las Vegas are asking for, two or 50%, which if I could sell an original for the price I want, then it's not bad. Now, I know guys that get 15000 off of abstract, you know, and so they must have sold it for 30000 So, and that's an abstract, and not that big, you know. But I mean, people are getting, like p paintings like this right here, they're getting $40,000 easy. Here's a picture I did uh, 20 years ago of an Apache warrior, uh, looking at pictures of Geronimo at the time, and um, kind of made this off of like three different pictures that I was studying. And this is what I came up with, did it in our oils and acrylic oil paints on canvas. It's three by four foot high. Did it in an ivory black. Now here is a drawing that I did and did of Kobe Bryant since he retired. A lot of people out here love Kobe Bryant. And just did it doing the black and white when I'm at home sometimes. 
sketching around. You're just black and white of Kobe with pencil. And as you see, I'm still doing it. So get done when I get done, I guess I can say. <laughs> another, here's a painting of uh, the jazz painting. It's another abstract jazz. I call it my abstract style. And you can see the detail in it. And it's something that uh, was done, I probably did that two years ago, I think. You know, playing around with colors and just sketching stuff out. Another one that's on the wall, same one, that's three by four foot, got in the starter frame. I like putting frames around some of them just to show. Now here's the drawing I did at, at work. Playing around, just a pencil of Paul George for the LA Clippers now, since he changed teams, but uh, just doing something, playing around with stuff, seeing what I can do with the pencil at the times, blend, blending it out. Yeah. Here's another painting I did, my, one of my basketball, I gotta put the varnish on it now. This is of uh, Steph Curry for the uh, Golden State Warriors, probably my best basketball player right now. Yeah, and uh, it's three by four feet. Trying to get it going. Like I said, I got to put the varnish over it. I haven't put it over it in about, it's been done. It's eight, 19th, it's been done for a year now and I just haven't did it all. Just haven't put the varnish over it. But here's a paint uh, drawing I did of uh, Steph Curry and, not Steph Curry, who am I talking about? <laughs> LeBron James and Kyrie Irving. 2015. I just wanted to deal with their, uh, their sketches, their portrait sketches in a sense and put them together when they were playing for Cleveland. And they had that hot team going. And this other one here is uh, one of my horse racing pictures, paintings, which I love doing, just fun to do. I call it Little Red on the outside, 36 by 24 on canvas board. And it's an uh, abstract painting. I think it came out very well. I put a nice frame around it. It's going to look something else. Here is a painting which I'm doing now, which is uh, LeBron James and Michael Jordan. I want to get one of them together. I have a few pencil of them, but I want to do a painting. And that's the, that's the starting of the painting, which I do in Burnt Umber. I started off. Here is another picture of... Uh, Dwayne Wade that I made years ago and uh, have done everything to it but put the varnish over it. Just got to put the varnish. It's probably one of the, I think one of my best pictures I've done, I've done so far. It's a little bit more detail I could put in there, but I'm still, do, I'm still doing it a little bit. The varnish, I should say. Here's a picture, an old picture I did. I did probably 10 years ago of the, uh, the old man and his young protege, the kid, and I put them on the street corner. It's a jazz picture. And I did this 10 years ago, and I'm still not done with it. I still got some stuff to put in his arms, some detail and some paint, and some paint on the saxophone, and on the kid too. I'm not done with this yet. It's just one of them pictures that has been around. <laughs> and here is another one I have of the horse, horse racing, which I love doing. I got about three or three of them of horses. This is 36 by 24 on canvas board again. It's framed. But uh, it came out very nice. It's got the polyurethane over it with the acrylics. But I love this picture. This is one of my best ones, I think, of my horse racing. Probably my best horse racing picture. But uh, these can be done very big. They can be done three by four foot or even bigger. But, you know, being in an apartment, I can't do them too big. I can't do them, uh, you know, at the biggest, probably three feet by 60 inches, three feet by five feet at the most. But uh, that's about it. For, for discipline, me, it's, I start drawing. I start drawing. I draw in different, like maybe charcoal or pencil, either one. But for 
discipline, I'll start with the basics. And for me, that's drawing people. And um, drawing at different angles. Me, since I don't see the person real a lot of times, I'll draw out of a book, out of a sports magazine, Sports Illustrated, see a good portrait in there of somebody, you know, uh, you know LeBron James, Mark the Bird, Federicks, old Detroit pitcher, and uh, just start drawing them. You see a good picture in there, you like, you, you like, you start drawing it. Got one of uh, Steve Nash in my booklet. You know, I got so many. I got all these drawing pads in here. Got all, all of them got sketches in them, and not not filled up. That's what's so bad. You're like, geez, you got a picture here and a picture every eight pages. And that's how it is. You just, you do that. And you don't fill them up, but you draw. <laughs> and then you get back to it a year later in that same pad. My message to young artists, keep doing what you're doing and keep drawing. Keep the drawing up. Try to draw just a little bit every day. Try to do something every day. That, you'll become better and better. I think one thing, Drawing is like a sport. You keep doing it, the, better, the more you do it, the better you'll get to me. If you keep, you keep trying hard, you take your time, and sometimes it takes taking your time. To, when you do for detail, you know, take your time doing one picture in detail and then the rest of them will come out. You do another one in detail, it'll be a lot easier. And it'll get, it gets easier every single time you do it. That's how drawing is. Just like a sport, I mean, you keep dribbling the basketball, dribble between your legs, one of these days you're gonna get it. You try every other day, just like boxing, keep hitting the speed bag. Uh, you know, you may not can hit it at first, the first, second, third day, the first week, you may not can hit it, but that fourth week, you, you're hitting it pretty decent. You, you're fighting, oh, I'm getting the timing down, you know, the speed bag. But drawing is just like that to me. You gotta keep doing it. And if you love it, you will keep doing it. Nothing's going to take you back from doing it.